In this video, we will cover how to trim and filter single and sequence data in Chipster, focusing on ion torrent data. When you receive a set of amplicon sequence data from a sequencing facility, there are several factors that need to be considered when deciding how to process the data. The first thing is the sequencing technology. Do you have paired end reads, single end reads, or maybe long reads? The second point is the gene you have amplified and sequenced. The gene affects the reference database you need to use in the analysis and also some gene characteristics such as sequence variation among species can affect the analysis. And one more point to consider is if you want to do your analysis based on operational taxonomic units, OTUs, or amplicon sequence variants, ASVs. And this will affect mostly the analysis pipeline used in the processing of the data. In Chipster, for OTUs, we have tools available based on Mother, and we have tools available for ASV analysis based on the Data2 pipeline. In this video, we will focus on a case where we have single and short reads from ion torrent sequencing. We have sequenced the bacterial 16S ribosomal RNA gene, and we want to look at operational taxonomic units and do the analysis with tools based on mother. So when we have received our raw sequence reads, we have had a look at the overall quality, as explained in the previous videos. The first thing we want to do is remove primers and adapters, because these are artificial nucleotides that we have added to our samples during sequence processing, so they don't represent any biological information, so we should remove them. And removal of primers is also a good quality control step, because if we see that both the forward drive primer and the reverse primer are present in our amplicon, we can, for example, see straight away that we have managed to sequence the whole amplicon. In this case, if, if at this step, if you have received your samples as a single FASTQ file, so all the samples in one file, instead of separate FASTQ files for each sample. So if you have a single file, at this step, you should separate your samples by barcode and remove the barcodes. And this step is called demultiplexing. We also want to remove reads with ambiguous bases, usually marked with an N that mark uncertain bases. And we want to remove long homopolymers because these are usually signs of some kind of sequencing errors. Next, we want to filter the reads based on quality scores that were introduced in the previous video. And for ion torrent sequence reads, a good starting point is uh, to use a sliding window of 10 bases and a minimum quality in the window of 20. And when the quality in the read drops below this threshold, then the read will be trimmed at that point. Finally, we want to remove reads that are much shorter than expected, and we want to remove identical sequences. If you received your samples as a single FASTQ file, so not demultiplexed yet, not separated by barcodes, there is a very handy tool based on a mother command called trim6 that can do all the steps in the previous slide in one go. And this tool is called trim primers and barcodes and filter reads. And as an input, it takes a single FASTQ file, so only a single FASTQ file, not multiple FASTQ files and it takes an oligos file. This is something specific to mother, but it's basically just a text file that gives information on the forward primer, the reverse primer, and then every barcode that have been used to mark the samples in your data. So barcode is short stretch of nucleotides that is added to the samples, usually at the PCR step to help separate the samples. And here is a view of the parameter window of, in this tool. So we have settings for the quality scores, remove, for removing ambiguous bases and homopolymers, and for sequence length. And we can also 
defined how many mismatches we want to allow against primers and barcodes. If we, our data has already been demultiplexed, so we receive one fast queue file for each of our samples, then we unfortunately cannot use this handy tool, but we can do exactly the same steps by using a few different tools in Chipster. Uh, for removing primers and adapters, we can use, uh, either use a tool called Cut Adapt or Tag Cleaner. And for filtering reads based on the quality scores and minimum length, we can use Trimomatic that was introduced in the previous video. And here is an example of how the parameter window for Cut Adapt looks, so for removal of primers, where we have to define that our data is single end reads, we give the sequence for the forward primer and the reverse primer. Note here that the reverse primer has to be in reverse complement in this case. And we want to tell the tool that we want to remove reads that were not trimmed. So reads where no primers were found should be thrown away. And as an input, we give our fastq files combined into a tar package. Next, we will combine all our sample-specific FASTQ files into one file. And this is done with a tool that, first of all, converts FASTQ files into FASTA. So now we get rid of the quality scores. We have done the trimming and filtering based on them, and we don't need them anymore. Uh, in the FAST, first file, we have only the name of the sequence read and the nucleotide sequence for each, each read. This tool also merges all the samples in one file and it creates a count file so count file is how mother keeps track of which sequence belongs to which sample and here is an example of a count file where in the rows we have each individual sequence read and in the columns we have all the samples Next, we will take the FASTA file and the COUNT file from the previous step and uh, use a tool called screen sequences for several criteria to get rid of ambiguous bases and homopolymers. So here is the first example where it is important that we give both the FASTA file and the COUNT file so that we have both the sequence information and the information which sequence occurs in which sample. And here, note that we will later use the same tool for another purpose, for screening a sequence alignment. So later we will use the parameters here at the bottom of the window. Now we need the one, ones at the top for ambiguous bases of our polymers and maybe also minimum length. Now there is one final step left before we are ready to move on with the analysis. We need to remove identical sequences. So if you imagine that our FASTA file contains um, tens or hundreds of thousands or even more nucleotide sequences from the bacteria in our samples, some of those sequences will probably be identical. And if in the further analysis, we would, for example, align these identical samples to a reference database over and over again, it would be computationally wasteful. And that is why I want to remove the identical sequences and keep only one representative in the FASTA file. And the COUNT file again keeps track of how many sequences the representative represents in each sample. And we remove identical sequences with a tool called Extract Unique Sequences. We give it as input the FASTA file and the COUNT file. As, and as output, we get a FASTA file with the uh, unique sequences. We get a COUNT table that keeps track of how many represented sequences are in each sample. And we get a summary file for sequence information. And this is a very useful file that we will use throughout our analysis to keep track of what is happening in our data. So let's have a closer look at it. This file always ends summary.tsv in Chipster. And first of all, it gives the number of total sequence reads in our dataset. It gives the number of unique sequence. 
reads, notice that the unique number of unique sequences is lower than the number of total sequences. And this file also gives the minimum, median, maximum, and quantiles of several characteristics in our dataset. For example, number of bases, so the length of the sequence reads, and the number of len length of homopolymers in our sequence reads. Now we are ready to proceed. So as an out output of quality control and filtering and trimming, we have a pasta file with our filtered and trimmed unique sequence reads. And we have a count file, which tells which sequence belongs to which sample. Here you see an example of a count file at this point. So in rows, we have each representative sequence. And in the columns, we again have samples. And the numbers tell in which sample and in how many copies the, each sequence read occurs in a data. Now we are ready to proceed to sequence alignment. <laughs> 